And you know how much entitlement you have to have to chase somebody down, detain them, jump out your car, and run toward a stranger. He didn't know her. He didn't know why she was approaching his car and demand that they do anything. Hey, players. So before the tragic and horrific and unnecessary murder of Ahmaud Arbery in 2020, there was the murder of 62-year-old Kenneth Herring in May of 2019. Now yesterday, a jury found Hannah Payne guilty of his murder. Let's get into this. So back on May 7, 2019, a then 21-year-old Hannah Payne witnessed I want to make this very clear. She witnessed an accident with 62-year-old Kenneth Herring. So according to eyewitness testimony, uh, who just happens to be an off-duty police officer who was on the phone with 911, Mr. Herring stopped at the scene of the accident, but he seemed to be impaired like something was going on with him. Now, the off-duty police officer uh, then tells 911 that Mr. Herring is driving off, and this was 20 minutes after the accident occurred, so he was calling to see where the police were. Now, at the same time, Hannah Payne is on with 911, and when she sees Mr. Herring drive off, she proceeds to follow him in her Jeep. Now, Hannah Payne told the 911 operator that she was going to get the license plate, and she indicated that she was following Mr. Herring. At that point, the 911 operator told her not to follow Mr. Herring. In fact, she needed to go back to the scene of the initial accident. 911 operator told Hannah Payne not to follow Mr. Herring at least four times during the 911 call, but Hannah Payne continues to follow him anyway. Then on the 911 call, you can hear Hannah Payne in the background telling Mr. Herring to get out of the car, get the F out of the car, get the F out of the car. And then you hear the gunshot. Hannah Payne comes back to the phone where she tells the 911 operator that Mr. Herring shot himself with her weapon. Hannah Payne testified during the trial that she was not blocking Mr. Herring in. But if you see this photo, she was definitely blocking Mr. Herring in. But when the police arrive on the scene, they take the weapon from Hannah Payne. Now, there is body camera footage that shows Hannah Payne arguing with the witnesses in the background saying that Mr. Herring had done that to himself and that's subsequently what she tells police officers when she gets to the police station after she was arrested. She told them that Mr. Herring got her, his hands on her weapon and shot himself. She testified that Mr. Herring put his hands around her neck, pulled her into the vehicle, that she was not trying to block him in, she was just trying to get him to stop. And he had pulled me in the car and um, at some point, my shirt had gotten grabbed. Okay. Um, and he... Go ahead, I'm sorry. He was pulling my wrist, and he pulled me in the vehicle. And he kept yelling at me, telling me, I have something for you. Um, and he used... I have some... Pardon, but I have something for you, bitch. And he's leaning, and he's reaching, and he's pulling. However, eyewitness testimony, as well as the 911 call, shows that Hannah Payne confronted Mr. Herring. He was asking her who she was. Uh, there was a little bit of tussle because she was going into the partially open window trying to get Mr. Herring out of the vehicle, and that's when she fired the shot. One of the eyewitnesses testified that Hannah Payne told Mr. Herring once he was shot that now he needs an ambulance. 
During the trial, we heard testimony from Mr. Herring's family stating that he was having a diabetic episode and he was trying to make it to the hospital, which was three miles from the location of the initial accident. We also heard testimony from EMS who said that Mr. Herring was going through a diabetic episode. So that's the reason why he, uh, that may have been the reason why he appeared to be impaired at the initial accident scene. His toxicology report also came back negative from, for any drugs or alcohol of any kind. I think it's also very important to note that on that day when Hannah Payne shot Mr. Herring, she did not offer him any type of medical help. In fact, when the police officers arrived on the scene, they asked who fired the shot and which she said proudly, I did. So Hannah Payne's defense to this entire thing was that she was just trying to be a good citizen. She was not a part of the initial accident at all. She followed Mr. Herring and she stated that when she confronted him, he uh, he pulled her into the vehicle and put his hands on her and uh, her shirt was also ripped down the middle. That was supposed to be her defense as to why. But the jury did not believe Hannah Payne. Yesterday, after just over an hour of deliberation, they found her guilty of malice murder, felony murder, aggravated assault, false imprisonment, and possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony. Now, again, she was offered a plea deal in which they offered her to do life in prison with the possibility of parole. But in Georgia, a malice murder conviction alone carries a life uh, life sentence without the possibility of parole. It is likely that Hannah Payne will spend the rest of her life in prison because she chose to get in her vehicle, follow a man, pull out a weapon that she only had for two weeks. She only had the weapon for two weeks. Very important to note that. And she shot a man because he was in an accident with someone else. With regard to count one as to the offense of malice murder, we, the jury, find the defendant guilty. With regard to count two, as to the offense of felony murder, we found, we, the jury, find the defendant guilty. With regard to count three, as to the offense of aggravated assault, we, the jury, find the defendant guilty. She sobbed as they found her guilty and also as they led her away in handcuffs uh, to spend the rest of her life behind bars. She's been free on bail since 2019. During the trial, you could see her try to muster up tears, but she couldn't muster anything up until she was found guilty on the malice murder charge and the reality set in that she was spending the rest of her life in prison. And in my opinion, that's exactly where she belonged. Before there was Ahmaud Arbery, there was Kenneth Herring. And now we finally have justice in both of those cases. Players, I want to know what you all think. Put your thoughts in the comments. Um, also, I'm sending my condolences out to the family of Kenneth Herring and thankful, thankful that they got the justice that they deserve because this did not have to happen. Mr. Herring should have been with his family today, but he's not because someone wanted to pull a Karen and do some vigilante justice, which was absolutely disgusting.